All right, so good evening. Uh, good evening, everyone. Welcome to our second webinar of the MBA experience, MBA student experience. Um, my name is Hugh Nguyen, and I am a professor of marketing here. And I have taught in um, three cohorts so far, the Saudi MBA, the AMBA, Accelerate MBA, and the Evening MBA. And very soon, I'll be teaching an online MBA program as well. Uh, also sit on the advisory board for our um, MBA programs. And so, so these are the students that we have uh, invited to come and share their experience tonight. And we're going to start with our very brief self-introduction, starting with John. Great. Yeah. So John Rivera, I'm in the Saturday MBA program. So that means currently it's full time uh, every Saturday for the first year. And then as you go into the next year, and we'll talk a little bit more about the programs, but um, I work for a software company, Citrix. I'm a partner alliances manager for global accounts. And yeah, second year in the program, I graduate in May. I'm looking forward to it. Diane? Oh, hello, I'm Diane. I am in the online MBA. It's our first cohort. Um, I'm in my first year. It's a two year program, but an accelerated full time program, as well as we do have students um, doing the part time program, which will be about four years. I'm in uh, data security sales at a company called Networks in Irvine, California. And yeah, it's a little bit about me. Hi, I'm Brooke Petties. I am in the evening MBA program, and I will be finishing my second year. At the end of the semester, I am in pharmaceutical sales for a company called AstraZeneca. And uh, yeah, a little bit about me. Hi, uh, I'm Supratik. Uh, I'm in the accelerated MBA program. Um, I currently work uh, as a product management intern in a company called Camino Financial in Los Angeles. Um, also, I'm an international student, um, so working, going to school, and trying to get sponsored, uh, it's all kind of part of the package. All right, great. So when you were thinking about you know, uh, applying to an MBA program, um, what were the key factors that you were considering? Oh, well, for me, I wanted an MBA. That was a life goal and just didn't have the opportunity to take two years off from, from work. I didn't have the opportunity to do the evening. The online wasn't around, or not at least. I wanted a cohort style, so I decided something in person. And then the weekend, I had a friend that did it in a different program on the East Coast, and he liked it. It was all day Friday and Saturday. I couldn't commit to that because of my business travel I've got to take. Um, so Saturday just fit in naturally. I met with uh, some of the, the recruiters and did a whole MBA tour. I really liked what um, what CCLB had to offer. So if I understand you correctly, it's the flexibility yes. that yeah. fits into your work schedule. Yeah, and, and cohort work based, yeah. and then the cohort approach. In person too. I work in technology, so everything is on a webinar. It's good mm -hmm. to come into a classroom and meet people, and you just absorb basically a lot of different years of experience from your, your coworkers. And I love the fact that in my program, I think the average is around nine or 10 years of work experience. So when we're sharing stories and maybe like an HR class, we're like, oh, you know, I never really thought about that. Or in a finance class um, or in group, group projects, it's, it's, it's helpful. It's really, it's really good. How about I um, So for me, I'm actually early in my career. I graduated my bachelor's in 2017. For me, I really just wanted to accelerate quicker in my career. I've been doing more entry level positions and I wanted to get to something more strategic and you know, with business strategy. Um, so that was kind of my motivation behind getting an MBA. Things I were looking for were going to a school, you know, that had that was prestigious, um, you know, a program that I could be doing while working as well as going to school. Um, cost was a factor I considered. Um, but I did also go to the information session and Dr. Morgan was very well informed, um, informative about the program, and I was just really sold on um, Cal State Long Beach. Yeah, good. So the big things for me, kind of similar to John, was I wanted an in-class experience uh, versus online. I'm in sales, and I'm it's also often a very isolating position, and so I wanted to be able to connect with people from different industries, different backgrounds, you know, mm -hmm. just different experience other than myself, and I knew I was going to get more of a collaborative process. Uh, coming through and doing that in class. Uh, I also was looking for more flexibility and the evening program was really aligning with my current uh, work style 
And so and because it's a self-paced program. It's very self-paced. Uh, I'm actually being able to accelerate it a little bit more, just kind of going through it now. I'm able to put on a little bit more of a workflow. And I also did like that I was able to tailor uh, to what was going to work best for me rather than maybe a cohort. Mm -hmm. That was just going to be what was uh, working for my schedule. And similarly, I talked to a lot of people in my company when I was looking for what I wanted to do. And to kind of go into a leadership position, get an MBA was kind of the number one requirement. I was just going to benefit myself at this company as well as in the future as a great investment. And so that was kind of why I chose to go through the program. I actually had a friend who went through the program a few years back and spoke Here? to her. Yes, at Cal State Long Beach. Uh, spoke to her and she had flowing recommendations of various professors and just the experience overall. And she said it really benefited her. Now she's working in, um, as a manager in finance for Hyundai. So. Excellent. Uh, for me, coming in as an international student uh, with a technical background, I've always wanted to look into um, uh, business schools in California. So um, I definitely did my research, but a big factor for me was also um, the cost associated uh, with uh, the MBA programs. And definitely, I was more attracted to the cohort uh, basis, and that's why the accelerated MBA appealed to me particularly because um, we got to really build a rapport with everyone in class because we were all going through the exact same thing. And we got to kind of work through it together and um, kind of build up our own skill sets through it. So it was definitely helpful having uh, um, so many people in the same class who kind of shared um, exactly what you were going through and they were able to help you through the process. Right. Yeah. And so, you know, the, the audience can see that um, the diversity and the flexibility of our program offerings here are very attractive to working professionals. You know, if you prefer the self-paced approach, then the evening MBA program is a very good choice for you. But if you prefer a more structured cohort approach, then the savvy and the and the, the accelerated you know, MBA programs would be a better choice for you. And if you prefer the flexibility of working and you know, full-time and studying whenever you have time at home, you don't have to come to campus here. But the online MBA is a very good approach for you. And the next question is, you know, what specifically about our programs that you know made you decide to come here? But I think I've already kind of heard the answer you know, through a lot of these responses where the flexibility of the program, the reputation of the program, the quality of the, the peers, the students, uh, the professors, and also the affordability of the tuition here, mm -hmm. right? Um, so let's talk about you know the how do you manage your work-life balance? Um, Soup is the only person who is not working full time right now, but you know the other three students are working full time. How do you manage that balance? Well, time management. Um, allow yourself to rest when you're done with work. I think that was the biggest thing that I had to understand. Um, I have a six month old at home, so while I was in the program. My wife was pregnant, and I'm still in the program, graduating May. But the biggest thing is just um, allow yourself to rest when you're done with with, uh, with the task that you have. And time management is huge. I think uh, Dr. Martin talks about time management. Time management is um, you can just look at your to-do list and make that not only having a to-do list, but also having an allocation of time that you're going to have on a to-do list. So if I've got three things to do, I've got One's going to take an hour, and one's going to take 10 minutes. And anything that takes two minutes or less, I just try to knock out. And then it'll give me a little bit of momentum. And just showing up, too, I think is half the battle. Uh, it's so interesting, too. They're, they're going to change the Saturday MBA program to be a mix. It's almost going to be it's going to be hybrid, 50% in class, which I think I wish that I had that two years ago. That would play a major factor. <laughs> but um, I've got no regrets in terms of uh, the program now. It's really just time management. And then allowing yourself, because there's always going to be something to do, but when you hit your major tasks, just allow yourself to rest. And then um, my wife's really good about making sure we, whenever I've done a day, a Saturday off, to we're going somewhere or we're on a vacation. So, so. Yeah, okay. Thanks. Um, yeah, so for me, the online is definitely beneficial. When I get off work, I don't have to drive to campus. I get to go home. I can relax for an hour, eat dinner, and then we do have um, asynchronous as well as synchronous. So we have synchronous where we're on the class with all of the cohort. Um, we're all on our webcams and then the professors on the webcam and we have two and a half hour classes uh, twice a week for one class um, has a class for yeah, each week. 
Um, but yeah, it's eight weeks and it is very much accelerated, but um, it is nice to get to go home and do class, you know, in my room or, um, you know, just in a more relaxed environment. But um, you definitely need the time to manage um, and give yourself time to relax as well as have fun as well. So it's all about um, prioritizing your assignments as well as the work, but it's manageable. <laughs> And like John said, not forget to set aside some you know, for personal time as well to, mm -hmm. to maintain your sanity. Yeah. <laughs> yes, I will say that's funny. That's a big thing that I've made sure I do is that I'm very diligent about scheduling time for studying, scheduling time for homework. I am definitely a procrastinator at heart, which is not what you can have <laughs> in this program, but I'm very diligent about creating, like I said, just a calendar, setting up times where I'm studying, but also setting up times when you can relax, you know, schedule even just phone calls with friends, schedule dinner with family to kind of keep that balance alive. Mm -hmm. But it's important that, especially right now for my program, since it is more self-paced, I'm taking three classes while also working full-time. Mm -hmm. And so just being able to schedule all that time during the weekends as well, even just after school or after work on the days that I don't have class, just putting the time in because if you don't, it can easily pile up and just doesn't benefit you. Okay, so how do you manage between your internship and the very fast-paced um, class structure of the Accelerate MBA program? Uh, for me, it actually took a little bit of time for me to find the right mix, uh, because in the beginning, because I'm a commuter too, so I commute to campus, um, and it takes me like an hour and a half, like during rush time, to get to campus and back. Um, so in the beginning, it it was a little stressful because I would get back home and be extremely tired, and then I'd have to do a lot of reading. <laughs> So not the best mindset to be in, but uh, I feel like there are two things that you can do. You can work hard or you can work smart or you can do both. Um, in my case, I chose to put all my readings on my phone and during my commutes, I put it on a speech to text. Oh. I mean, text to speech reader so that I would always be kind of engaged uh, with the readings uh, while I was still multitasking. And this way, at least when I got back home, I had enough time to kind of just relax and hang out with my girlfriend rather than like always being stressed like 24-7. Um, with work, um, that helps as well because again, when I commute to work or when I commute back, I'm always kind of hooked in. Um, and I feel like something that helped me particularly well was the cohort structure okay. because the days that I am actually on campus, uh, I have my team that I work very closely with mm -hmm. and we uh, help each other through uh, all the different assignments that we have. A lot of work that we have is team-based so you have to be um, very engaged with your teammates and be able to kind of uh, pick up uh, whatever you need to do. And being on campus um, for, for your classes like really helps if you say stay after class, complete whatever you need to with your team, and then you go home because then you have nothing to worry about once you get home. Um, so this kind of mix worked really well for me, but it took me a little while to figure that out. I'm happy I did. Okay. Works. Smart, like you said, the yeah. technology allows you to do that as well. Yeah, I've got to ask you about that text to speech reader. I was just going to ask you about that after. <laughs> it's like listening to a podcast, right? Yeah. Sure. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, and, and you know, on that topic, um, has it been a, a situation where you feel like things are spinning out of control, whether it is meeting a deadline at work and then you still have a paper to turn in? Um, if you do have you know, a personal experience of a big challenge that you are facing, if, if you could share. You know, with the audience and also among ourselves, how did you overcome the situation? Anyone? I can go. Um, so I think very early on in the in the class, so being at a school for about eight or nine years, and then adjusting to the workload and the pace is important. So that is the biggest thing. And then uh, the group projects and the case analysis are important. I can say that specifically, I, had, I know I had a work trip that had, it needed to go international travel. And then that week was two midterms and a paper. So it was, yeah, you got to suck it up. I was reading on the plane, um, doing as much as I could. I think I got an A on one and a B plus on another, which you just got you to show up as half the battle. And at some point, you're just going to get, uh, you're going to get a little overloaded. I think that's what they, they know the, the pressure points as to how much you can handle, and they, you know, if the professors take your feedback, um, and I kind of feel bad for your course that was like in the middle of having a kid, <laughs> so I should have, should have really triple read all my cases analysis, but um, I really enjoyed uh, the marketing course that we had. All right. 
Definitely. I think, you know, kind of talking about the learning, I was, I've was i been out of school for about seven years before I started the program and trying to juggle all that with just my, like I said, innate procrastination led to a point in one of my semesters where I had two large projects due in both an accounting class, which is not my forte, <laughs> uh, and a group, a group project as well in there, plus a marketing class. And it required one almost all nighter for me, which I haven't done since I was maybe 20. And I actually ended up having to take a vacation day from work to get oh. everything done, which is not how I would like to choose uh, <laughs> to spend a vacation day, but it definitely just made me realize the importance of, like I said, keeping that structure, mm -hmm. setting aside time to study, you stay on top of your work, not like maybe an undergrad and you wait until the very end to do a project, you're doing it the whole semester. And it's, it was definitely a, a tough little time there, but it's been much better from here on out. Very good. Do you feel that, I don't know whether you have talked to the boss, you know, at work so that they understand that Yes, you know, you're working here full time, but you're also an MBA program, I mean, student full time. Um, has that happened? Or do you feel that if you, you know, communicate with people at work, then they could help you in situations like that? I think my boss was, so my boss is kind of the, my director was the reason why I even started an MBA program. He gave me a book by Pat Gelsinger. Um, it's called The Juggling Act, mm -hmm. where he literally has a kid, goes through a whole MBA and on to a PhD program. So I literally had to just read that and understand if somebody did that, I can, you know, obviously, I, I, I learned better from reading. Um, my, so he was super open. I've since had very a, supportive. very supportive, yeah, super supportive. He opened up and said, you know, I definitely would have, that was one of his life goals, but as soon as you start having a family, things take precedence. So I, I really took that to heart and uh, received a lot of support from, uh, from my coworkers, got a promotion too, based off of it. Um, my new director, basically, basically, she didn't know it was an interview, but said, hey, so what are you doing? I was like, oh, I, love, I wanted to up level my skills. I'm doing an MBA, I'm working on this. She's like, okay, well, we're doing this new part business unit out of the company, and we'd like you to be part of it. You know, what is it gonna take, or what, you know, what would work for you? So I think an MBA, you know, being more vocal about it, I, I think it's given me more confidence in the job market and, and in the company and sharing that. I don't sh share it with everybody. Like if it's a client for the first time, I don't think, oh, I'm in an MBA program. You still almost have to have that rapport where, right, right. you know, I'm still full-time available to you. So it's a balancing act and you're definitely, and then you have the folks at home can always make sure they're happy and then we'll talk. <laughs> so. That's your support network, very important people. Um, so let's talk about our classroom experience. What is it like to be in an MBA classroom? And how is it different from your undergraduate classroom? We can start with anyone. Yeah, well, for me, I actually studied business in my undergrad. I studied finance. So it was kind of a course overview of every, you know, taking into every area of business, marketing, accounting, finance. Um, so it's kind of more introductory. But when you come into an MBA classroom, you're doing case studies for every single class. You're really in a more managerial executive perspective, um, I would say. So it was really helpful for me because I've already dipped into a lot of these courses, but now I'm doing it in more of a managerial executive, you know, perspective, really analyzing all areas of the business and making strategic decisions. So for me, it's been very helpful, um, especially I'm in technology and I'm in um, the information systems course right now. So there's a lot of um, things I'm learning that's helping me with my job currently. Um, so it's been really beneficial for me. Okay. You go next. Um, so for me, because I come from a computer engineering background, um, the MBA was like an entirely new door open for me. Um, although I knew that um, I did want to go in, uh, along the lines of uh, my business education, I didn't really know what that entailed. Um, but getting into the MBA program um, and getting introduced to all the different um, classmates that I have and the different walks of life that they come from, it definitely helped a lot because you get to learn from each person. Because again, um, I think John touched upon this earlier, but uh, basically if someone uh, comes from an HR background, someone comes from an accounting background, that's stuff that I don't know anything about when I'm just getting in. But being able to hear from them and the challenges that they went through, um, it kind of helped, I feel, round up my uh, business knowledge. Because again, like I mentioned earlier, I come from a technical field. Um, my undergrad was 
very, very different from an MBA program because a lot of calculation involved, a lot of um, uh, software that you have to use, but not as much real one-on-one -on -one interaction. And having that kind of helped me um, really realize what I wanted to do for the rest of my life. Because I knew early on that uh, being in engineering alone was not my end goal. So this kind of helped me kind of um, understand what my ambitions were and go along the right path to achieve them. Okay, very good. Uh, another big thing that I kind of recognize being in the MBA program versus being in your undergrad program, people are here because they want to be here. People are here because they're wanting to you know, step up their level and step up their game within their current positions. They're trying to go into more leadership leadership positions. So people are a lot more engaged, which I find encouraging because you know we're all here for our own personal development. So you everyone really comes to class prepared. You're willing, you know, you're ready to discuss the cases that we're analyzing on a more you know managerial level. And you're hearing challenges and discussions from people from various backgrounds that in my current position I don't deal with at all. And so it's just kind of piggybacking off everybody else. It's just nice to get all those different perspectives. It just challenges your own way of thinking, which is brought into horizons even more. Yeah, some students um, they have some problem adjusting to the new way of studying because you know in the undergraduate um, education it's pretty much one way lecture taking notes and then taking exams and so some of them had problems in an MBA class where it's very discussion based it's it, it, it's more of a seminar so there's less lecturing but you know more discussion how do you prepare yourself for active class participation and how do you take that say constructive criticism or you know, arguments from peers and also professors? That's a good point. I think um, kind of early on, I would speak abstractly about maybe topics that we we're talking about. Well, this is what management should do. Sharing from your own experience is really helpful. And part of the reason why we're all in an in a MBA program is you have different experiences there. So speaking more about your own experience in that situation, maybe you can draw an example. Like we, um, for example, we're either in a managerial accounting class or um, like financial accounting, like the first three months, I had a, um, I sold some shares in a business that I was involved with, and then boom, in financial accounting, she's like, oh, there's this goodwill that you, you could have parked uh, more, of, you could have sold it for way more with this um, variable here. I was like, man, I wish I had you like eight months ago. Where were you? And so that's the biggest thing too. And, I think way more, you're way more mature when you're in a program, even if it's a couple years out of uh, out of uh, undergraduate, you have work experience, even if it's two years, a year, you understand how the world works. I, I think it's um, it's mm -hmm. eye-opening, a little different than academia, and then you're bringing, it's the most practical, I think, of all the exposure. I used to have an art and science background, I have a minor in uh, biology. Mm -hmm. um, so all of that is super abstract, but from a practical standpoint, I think, our degree is uh, definitely the most versatile. So. I think you were mentioning preparedness or getting ready for class. Um, you definitely need to read, um, you know, the material, the case studies, the videos, but you, you want to read it because you want to have good discussion in class, um, be able to have nice, um, you know, arguments, um, counter arguments for what people are saying. And um, the professors always, you know, for case studies are really nice because you get to hear, um, you know, what you thought the, the right answer was, but then the professor will give their feedback. And so it kind of brings it all together. But um, yeah, you definitely want to be prepared before class, but you also want to, like you're encouraged because you're motivated and um, yeah. <laughs> How do you take, say, constructive criticism or if someone disagrees with you? Um, and be very passionate, you know, in their disagreement, you know, against, I mean, uh, uh, to your opinion, how do you handle that? Because some students, they can take it very personal, uh, even though, you know, as faculty, we always say that, you know, this is the beauty of, you know, class discussion is that, you know, we have different perspectives. Um, and how do you not take it personally? I think one thing that I can kind of call upon when I was in your class last semester, Dr. Nguyen, is going through these case studies, you're thinking about it again from your own you know, mindset, mindset and perspective. And you might not always be looking at the bigger picture, but somebody coming from an engineering background will look at it with a different set of eyes. So I don't really look at it as being 
wrong or challenging myself. It's more challenging my way of thinking, mm -hmm. which has kind of helped me a lot and kind of just continued my confidence in speaking up. I feel like when I was maybe younger, I felt I didn't feel like speaking up. I was always afraid it would be quote unquote wrong. Mm -hmm. And you really learn as you're out in the real world and you're in business, there's there's not often maybe necessarily wrong answers. Mm -hmm. There's just different ways of thinking and kind of coming maybe more to a conclusion. So I've never really felt myself being challenged, just more my way of thinking, you know, yeah. being open. And then having people of different backgrounds you know, in the classroom really helps you also understand their own perspective. So that when you're working in an office with you know, people of different backgrounds, then it's more um, cohesive as if you will. Right? Mm -hmm. Let's talk about the impact of your MBA education on work performance. Um, either, you know, how does it help when you're looking for a job or how does it help in your current job? Can you share some experience, personal experience? Yeah, so I, I think I mentioned before, I, I got a promotion. Um, but even within the first class, you just feel like you're equipped with a lot of knowledge mm -hmm. and there's certain responsibility with that knowledge. You can't now still go on to make the decisions you made. That's just, that's a uh, negligent. And you now need to act upon those uh, what, the, what you're learning in class. Mm -hmm. So now in the second year, we're taking it a little bit step further with client projects, mm -hmm. which I thought a regular class course load was good. A client <laughs> project is, well, I wonder what we're going to do here. And then you're constantly tweaking to make sure that when you're dealing with the personality of the client, uh, client and time timing. Um, so the the immediate impact is when I before I started this new role was you couldn't unlearn what you just sat in class uh, for you know eight hours or seven hours mm -hmm. and go to your work and kind of go through. There is a information overload where you have to take it and you make it really simple for people around you mm -hmm. to, to understand. Right. So mm -hmm. instead of saying business jargon, insert business jargon, you really have to say, okay, well, what's the critical path and what's the critical, and it really, that's the another finer point too. And I don't think there's a ta-da moment after you get this degree, but at some point, you know, five, 10, 15 years down the road, you're gonna be like, okay, wow, that was, you know, good impression. Okay. And for me, um, I'm in sales right now, but I definitely want to get into other areas of business. So when I took the marketing course with Dr. Flexo, I got to do marketing cases and it really made me think, well, now I'm in sales, but I want to move into marketing. So now I've already, you know, approach different executives like the CMO which is the chief marketing officer or the VP of sales so I have a lot more confidence approaching the executives sharing my ideas um, and trying to you know make a path um, at my company. Very good it's great to hear that. <clears throat> I say similarly kind of the confidence of just being in this program has really come through at my uh, current position and also in sales we do a lot of national calls where the you know, president of US sales is on the line and you know, just a lot of very high executive people where I normally never would have spoken on those calls. Mm -hmm. And now I'm a lot more engaged. We do you know, regional meetings where everybody's in the same room together and we're having to volunteer and participate. Not normally my style. And now I'm up there and really being involved and just the confidence that comes with just everything I'm learning and being able to kind of bring it through has been uh, very big. And also the responsibility I've been given within my current position has increased um, I've now I've had two managers now since uh, going through and I'm moving into a different position and they both have take had MBAs or they have their mm -hmm. MBAs so they see the responsibility that I can bring so there's a few more leadership positions that I've been involved with uh, in as a result of just being in this program that I probably wouldn't have had otherwise. Okay, look forward to um, even higher up. Higher positions and more responsibilities going forward after graduation. I will also say I had an HR class for last semester, and it was just as I was starting my year in review with my current manager, and it <laughs> proved to be very successful going through that, and then having that conversation, you know, different uh, salary promotions kind of immediately after. So right. a mm -hmm. lot of short-term benefits as well right now. So some of you see the the short-term dividends right away. Mm -hmm. What about so you know as an in, uh, a foreign an international student, you know, mm -hmm. you quit the job yeah. and then you came here. And now you're working on your internship. Let's talk yeah. about you know, how it helps you on that path. Sure. Um, so like I mentioned earlier, I come from a computer engineering background. So uh, as such, I knew that uh, my technical skills were pretty strong. But I wanted to eventually become a product manager, which entails uh, certain business skills. 
And although I felt like I had those, um, unless you have that on your resume as well, it's a little difficult to get your foot through the door. Um, so um, the way that the MBA program really helped me was um, the first internship I had was with an HR tech company. And the way that um, your profile looks to them is um, this person's great in engineering, this person's getting an MBA, he brings the best of both worlds. Mm -hmm. And that really helped me really communicate with all the different teams that I was working with. Because a product manager's job is to work closely with the engineering team, but you have to make sure that they meet the business goals. Right. So I was kind of the translator between those two because um, I knew the tech spec, but I also knew the business goals at the end of the day. And um, coming uh, here and bringing sort of the international uh, aspect to it as well, that I've worked in a company in Dubai, um, it definitely looks attractive on your resume, but at the same time, bringing the skills that you learn from class to your workplace is definitely something that solidifies that. It kind of gives you that extra validation where they know that they've hired you for a reason and then they can see that reason like in practice. So it definitely helped me. With the HR tech company, I like, again, and taking from your example, like if I hadn't taken my HR class, a lot of that jargon would have just been alien to me. But luckily I was able to engage and kind of bring my own two cents to the table. And um, it, it, it makes you look good and makes you feel good. But obviously, you're also bringing value to the company, which they wouldn't have gotten otherwise. So it definitely is um, a positive experience at the end of the day. All right, great. So let's switch to a new pasture. Let's talk about how you benefit from the peers, from your, you know, um, from the other students in the program. John briefly talked at the beginning about the connections that you made, you know, throughout the program uh, with people that have very interesting you know, experience. But um, how have you benefited from the peers? So I'm the class rep too, and I guess all the uh, class related soft skill stuff bubbles up to me. So I engage you know, by nature of the position. Um, I've just grown to appreciate everybody and the different industries that they're in. I genuinely, and then, you know, we'll connect on LinkedIn, right? So imagine I've got a thousand connections on LinkedIn. This person's got a thousand connections and you go and LinkedIn, if somebody's not wa is watching, it's not on it. Please definitely stay on and stay engaged. <laughs> I need to do my own LinkedIn brand myself. But um, just opening up the sphere of influence, right? So now you not only know Dr. Nguyen, you know Dr. Nguyen's friends as well. And it's a very small knit world in Southern California. If you want to just say Southern California, but you never know. A lot of folks came from the East Coast, so they've got connections there. And being with somebody for 23 months really I consider them all friends, yeah. uh, genuinely <clears throat> friends that I love to you know, barbecue or hang out with you know, outside of the classroom. Yeah. We do. Um, anyway. <laughs> <laughs> um, yeah, for me, like I said, I was in more early in my career and the range of um, people in my cohort are you know, mid-career, maybe closer to the end, um, really impressive backgrounds, people in the FBI, Patagonia, just really impressive companies that maybe I would want to work for one day. Um, and everyone's just so, you know, open, honest. Um, it's always really nice to work with different people. We're always moving to different groups. So, so far it's been um, really great. And it's nice for someone who's younger um, or just early in the career to get to work with people who are, you know, in upper management. So it's been really nice. And you can definitely learn from their experience. And so that's the thing about, you know, an MBA education, right? Not only do you learn from the faculty, but you learn from, you know, peer students, I mean, other students as well. Um, that's, a, that's a nice thing about the uh, evening MBA program is that there are some people who are just a few years into their career. There are people who have been in their career for 30 years and they're already directors, which is wanting to you know, obtain more skills. And so there's just a wide range of knowledge there. Uh, and the nice thing, even though we aren't technically a cohort, you really get close to the people that you're in group projects with, you're working with very often, you know, quite often. So you have each other to kind of lean on as a support system going through this program because not everybody really understands what working full time and also having to do, you know, with extra priorities uh, feels like. And uh, just similar to what John was saying, being able to talk to people from different, you know, companies. Some people are, you know, they're working in marketing for you know, agents and people in the MBA, there's people in Boeing, there's people all over the place. You get to hear maybe some career paths you might not even have thought about mm -hmm. as you're entering the program that maybe you have some interest in, you know, maybe from sales to marketing, and just kind of getting that knowledge in case has always been very beneficial. What about a young cohort like yours? 
Um, well, with the with our cohort system, it's it's really great because a lot of our interaction amongst each other is like very informal, just because the cohort is that young. Mm -hmm. um, so we definitely hang out a lot uh, outside of class hours. At least we used to when we had more time. Right now, everybody's working, so it's, it's a little bit more difficult. Um, but that being said. Uh, I think the networking aspect is definitely huge within the cohort system because because you're so close to these people, um, say everyone is looking for a job, um, one person gets into a company, they can actually refer you for like other positions that they think you would be good for. And um, we have a, I have a friend within our cohort uh, who's actually working for Universal right now, and he gets discounts on tickets. So <laughs> yeah, he's, he's kind enough to spread the love. So uh, it's definitely been uh, useful uh, for me, uh, both in terms of the friendships I've made as well as the networking aspect of it. Yeah. Great. Um, so let's speak about professors and, and faculty. So we have faculty that have um, either the practical experience side and or faculty that are you know academics, right? Um, how do you feel that you have benefited from the academic ex expertise that, let's say, the tenant can attract faculty? And also the managerial or practical experience of say you know lecturers that we have in the um, MBA classrooms. Yeah, so I all of them I still as much as I can stay in touch with professors. Um, I remember so Professor Massini in management. He academically probably got like an eight fifty on his uh, GMAT score, and then professionally he's got like thirty years experience in the aerospace. So he's brought us on kind of school trips. Yeah. Uh, so we've toured his facility. Um, get to keep in contact with you on some of the board stuff. And then I had a finance professor, Dr. Lee, mm -hmm. who is a portfolio manager. So mm -hmm. he still gives us his status of the economy. And I trade all of my, <laughs> my accounts plus my kids' uh, college account based off of that and other things too. So it, it's a practical, but it, if you pay attention in class, definitely make a little bit extra money. <laughs> um, but then just getting to get to know them outside of class too and seeing how you know, they genuinely have a heart for this program and they want to see it advance. So that's good. It's a good investment in a program like this because you know in 15, 20 years, it's like, oh yeah, I want to see it's mm -hmm. Um So that's, it's really good to see. I had no idea the, the scope of, of, you know, everything I was supposed to do, but yeah, no, it's, uh, get to see them too and in passing some of the professors. Um, I would say a big thing, you know, with this program that I've come to learn is I have been here. I'm actually from Long Beach, so I'm a local. I've always been around Cal State Long Beach. I didn't go here for my undergrad, um, but you know, a lot of people at my school did. It always has a really big reputation, a really positive reputation. I have learned now that the alumni for this program are very proud of being from here, and they want to be able to cultivate and bring people from this program, you know, bring them up. And so that's been kind of nice to see just already being through this. Um, a big thing with the professors, you know, as you were mentioning, we have some professors, they've been vice presidents of companies, they're they built companies from the ground up, they've worked, you know, they've been consultants on multi-million dollar mergers and acquisitions. And you get to hear all of their stories and all their examples kind of applied while we're in class. So we're gonna be, you know, we're learning about a certain topic and then being able to bring in that real world application. Kind of really solidifies mm -hmm. the, the learning for me the understanding and also just being able to hear you know what happens out in the real world at that level to which i'm trying to achieve um, and then likewise with you know academic professors and it's just i feel like i'm challenged a lot more in my own way of thinking in maybe those types of classes and being able to work through the case studies and think about things in more broader term have been really beneficial so both are fantastic ways of learning, and you really kind of get benefits from both ways of teaching. So it's been really great. It's good to hear that. I think for me, uh, I'm going to name names for the professors, so <laughs> just putting it out there. I think with Dr. Wen's class, uh, I definitely nerded out a lot on the case studies because a lot of the things that we learned in that class, I really didn't know about. Like, for example, um, I think we did the Google Glass case study. I think we did something on Coca Cola as well. And I remember that I would go home and um, my girlfriend and I would just be talking about something. I'd go, did you know this about Coca-Cola? And she'd be like, why do you know so much about this right now? But definitely like that helped build uh, my knowledge set um, on what different businesses were doing. And I think um, adding on to what everyone else has kind of mentioned, um, 
Dr. Okamoto, who uh, is a, a strategy professor, um, they're the Harvard, Harvard business case on him. So that's definitely like something that would brag for him. Like, I immediately WhatsApp my mom and say, that my, my professor was making <laughs> Harvard business for your case study. And then there's uh, Dr. Sam Lee, who uh, was the CEO of Pizza Hut in um, uh, the Asia Pacific. And he comes with so much life experience that he, he really imparts that wisdom to the class. And we would not have that experience anywhere else. So like having that mixture of everyone bringing their life experiences, as well as pulling from um, the data that's already out there and helping us kind of um, take advantage of that and learn from that, that's definitely been a great experience for me to have. So let's let, let's wrap up our session here because I know that you know some of you probably have uh, eating classes. So what advice would you give to someone who is say on the fence about you know, applying to an MBA? They're there and they just need to hear a little bit more say personal advice to kind of push them you know into really applying to this degree. What advice would you give them? So I ask the question my family asked me because it's not only you who's going to be doing the program it's your support system what does uh what does mba life look like for you like what mba is a the means to an end it's not the end um so if you're on the fence understand that um you know why am i getting the MBA? is it to advance your career is it to start your own business is it to uh, up level your skill set um, is it a requirement for a job position that you're looking at in the future? So really have a five to ten year plan because if you just think 90 days in advance, you're going to be very short-sighted in, in your career path. And nowadays, even more and more, I'm learning, um, nobody's going to take you through a company and say, hey, this is the career path we have for you. You have to chart your own way. You've got to pioneer your own way. Um, but have a specific goal in mind that you can accomplish post MBA, uh, and that and that MBA could be a you know a useful tool. So think about the long term yeah. benefits of yeah. the MBA program and, and how that fits into your future goals for yourself. Mm -hmm. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. I think going off what John said, just which um, program you know can really fit into your life. It is a big commitment. It's not something you can just wing. Um, you know your family's involved, your support system, so you do need to make sure. You know, you have you know a couple of years to do it, and for everyone to be on board. Um, so just really, you know, what motivates you to want to have the MBA? Is it like you said, um, a job promotion? Was it just furthering your education, learning more about business, um, becoming a better you know soft skills and quali uh, qualitative skills or um, quantitative skills? So yeah. All right. Great. Sure. Also being on this side of it now, I was a little on the fence when I was beginning to. You know, start this program and really do I want to make this large commitment? And it is quite a commitment, but I recommend if you're, you know, if you're going to do it, you get out of it what you put into it. So just know that you know it's a lot of the required work, reading, there's group projects, there's there is a lot, um, but you're going to get skills that you really wouldn't have otherwise. You know, you kind of, you don't know what you don't know, right. and kind of going through here, I. I didn't realize how much I didn't know kind of going through this program just from various types, you know, from going to HR. I never had to work in HR, I've never been through it, but just hearing, you know, the background of all of it, I, it's, so there's a lot of benefits to it, but it's a lot of work. The support system has been very helpful. You know, make sure you're talking to your family, your friends, there might be birthday parties you don't get to go to, there's big events that you might have to scale back on. Um, but the sacrifices to have, you know, to keep this priority number one is it's been really worth it for me so far. Great. I think from my perspective, um, it was definitely a very difficult decision. Um, an MBA in the U.S. when you're an international student, it's a pretty good commitment. Um, I know it's a good commitment for everybody, but it's just like another degree of difficulty that kind of gets introduced in front of you. You really have to know like what your end goal is. Like for me, the way that I did it was I looked at LinkedIn and I looked at jobs that I wanted. Like I saw myself in those jobs at some point and all of those said that they needed an MBA. So at that point, uh, I knew that this was something that I definitely wanted to do and needed to do. Um, and then when it came to Long Beach, um, something that really attracted me was um, the customizability of the MBA that you could take. So you have so many different <clears throat> options right in front of you, and it depends on um, really you and your schedule and what you think you can handle. 
And at the end of the day, you are the person who's deciding that for yourself. No one's forcing you to be in a program that you would be uncomfortable with. Um, so you have you you know what you're getting into from the beginning, and like everybody else said, um, do the work, make sure that um, you show up on time. Like this this really trains you for a like a real life a real life job situation. You have to show up on time. You have to do your work, um, and at the end of the day, um, you'll reap the benefits. So um, just show up, uh, get your work done, and uh, you're sure to get a great experience out of it. Right. Yeah. So if you want to grow personally and professionally, then you know the NBA is definitely something that you should consider. Absolutely. Especially a lot of job descriptions are, like you said, are required that you have you know, an MBA, right? So the, the last part, um, John mentioned earlier that the Saudi MBA, uh, the Saudi MBA program will be restructured due to um, the hybrid approach. Um, how do you respond to that? How do you react to that news? I was sure it's it two years ago, <laughs> and then also the uh, the concentration is. It's going to be disruptive technology and sustainability. Literally, John Chambers, former CEO of Cisco, is still working as a board member on techno disruptive technology. So if you think about maybe Microsoft uh, 30 years or 20 years ago was disruptive. That's now the legacy technology, the incumbent technology. Now there's new technology, AI, machine learning, mm -hmm. um, preparing you for the future. Because I know a lot of friends that they were traders in Wall Street. And Imagine you high frequency trading. You're making great living. Like they were making by far triple what we were making at college. Um, but now it's you got to retool and reskill yourself. So it's uh, more so, and it's great to see somebody else in technology. So it's, uh, it's great. And this program would be um, half in person, in class, oh, I would have loved and half that. online. Yes. And since we're switching to that approach, uh, to that mode. Um, so at this time, we will um, Do you want to have, open it up for questions? Right. So right now, we will open the floor to anyone who has any questions to the current students here, to myself as a faculty person, and also to Giselle, um, who's, in, who's running several uh, programs. Yeah, so I can help answer any admissions questions, but we can save that um, for the end um, while we have our panel here. If you have any questions for our panel, um, feel free to unmute your microphone uh, or you can uh, type into the chat box um, and we'll answer any questions. A question that I did get into the chat box earlier in the session was about the uh, hybrid Saturday program. So I think we pretty much answered that, how that's going to work and the new concentration. Um, but if there are any other questions, uh, please feel free to unmute your microphone or type into the chat box. So right now the, the Saturday program meets on Saturdays face-to-face, um, -face, but in the future we will have about half of the class being face-to-face -face in class, and the other half of the class would be online. Exactly. So it gives you a lot more flexibility so that you will have some Saturdays being at home and not be having to come to campus. So we do have one question. Um, so Kyle is asking, do you think obtaining an MBA is more beneficial after having work experience rather than going straight after undergrad? Okay. What, do you, what do you guys think? Well, I can answer that, at least for me, since I did recently graduate a few years ago. For me, I could have done, um, at my, I went to Northern Arizona University, I could have continued on and did a year MBA, um, which my family encouraged, but I knew I really wanted to get out there, get work experience, um, and now having the MBA alongside um, my experience is very helpful with connecting what I learned in class, getting to discuss with my peers about these topics, and then bringing to the workplace. Um, it's extremely beneficial, so I think um, working. But I know they do have the um, accelerated full-time MBA, and they have certainly been benefited by that as well. Sure, <laughs> sure. Yeah, I'd love to. Yeah. yeah. So um, with us, really, uh, like, um, I come well, with a couple of years of work experience, so I wouldn't be the best person to answer this. But I can bring uh, my cohort's experience into it. Because basically, I would say 90% of our cohort um, came in with little to no work experience, like right after undergrad. Um, and everybody found internships and everybody uh, found jobs uh, because of the MBA program. Because again, um, even though it helps having work experience when you're applying to jobs, um, coming from um, any uh, undergrad uh, to an MBA system and then applying for jobs, like yeah, that MBA uh, within your resume alone counts for a lot. Um, but again, it depends on the kind of jobs you're applying to as well. You need to set your goals and then cater your resume to that 
particular job, and the MBA system kind of helps you imagine how you would get that done in the, in the best way possible. Um, uh, something else that um, CSULB provides to us uh, is uh, we there each one of us has a mentor assigned to us, an industry mentor. Um, so um, I know my mentor helped me a lot in terms of my job search, um, where he actually connected me with people from his own network, and he said, "Hey, talk to this person." Um, this guy's looking for an internship, uh, he might be great for your company. And that definitely was something that I was not expecting getting into the program, and it was a very happy surprise. And each one of uh, the people in my cohort had an industry mentor who helped them with that process as well. So even if you um, don't have substantial work experience, if you just come straight out of college, this is still a support system. Yeah. There are mentors, there are the career service that can help you find that job. Absolutely, and the rest of your cohort as well, like I mentioned earlier. When someone gets um, their foot through the door, they kind of help keep that door a little ajar for the rest of the cohort as well. So we do have another question from Linda. She asked if um, the students for the Saturday program will get the calendar ahead of time to know what Saturdays they will have off. Um, and also um, if um, the Saturday, the new Saturday program will still require the international trip. Um, so this is a program, this is a brand new change. So we don't know exactly what it's going to look like yet. But I do anticipate that the students would have ahead of time um, knowing when, what Saturdays they would have off. Um, the second part of the question, international trip is still going to be a part of the Saturday program. Um, have you been on the international trip yet, John? Not yet, so I can't speak okay. to it, but we are going to um, Rotterdam, Netherlands, uh, which is really cool. Some of our classmates are taking like three weeks off. Are <laughs> you still going to have a, a maybe get the MBA to then switch industries? <laughs> but I'm glad to see Linda and a lot of folks are asking about the uh, Saturday programs. It's very popular. Why so I chose far, it. Um, yeah. It's interesting too. I, I drive in the morning. I'm literally the only person in my neighborhood who's getting up <laughs> to go. I'm like, this is going to pay off one day. But yeah, we're going to go to Rotterdam. Really looking forward to it. Are you, you coming? Um, I just took. Oh, you know, did the trip. Right. Yeah. Yeah. We went yeah. to, um, we to Tel Aviv, Israel. Oh, okay, cool. Yeah. And cool. We, we, cool. we learned about the startup you know, environment in oh, Tel Aviv. Yeah. Yeah. Tel Aviv is really yeah, it's one of the top uh, destinations for startups and incubators. And so okay. we were there studying. Yeah, that's another right. big uh, driving force to actually. Yeah, it was, it was a great experience. Uh, we got to like these startups opened their doors to us. Uh, we got we got to come in. And funny enough, um, they presented their entire business to us and being MBA students, we were like, wait, how do you do this? How do you do this? Uh, are we profitable? And these were like really uh, like needling questions that we as MBA students gave them and they, they were there to answer. They were there to be welcoming and really help us out. Uh, a couple of the companies that we met, um, there's an AI startup called Temi Robotics. Um, so basically it's a personal robot which follows you around and it can take commands and it's it, it was mind blowing, really. And then there was a company called Hargo. We won't go too much into that. <laughs> yeah, it, it was basically uh, alternative nutrition. Let's just put it that way. Uh, and then we met IBM as well. And uh, it was truly an experience that I know that our cohort will never forget because we got to hang out as a cohort, go meet these companies. And obviously, we had some free time on our hands as well. We got to explore the city and get to know each other on a much more personal level than we would have otherwise. We always hear that that's the best part of, of the program for a lot of people because it's such a great bonding experience and it's kind of like it's usually near the end of the program so it's kind of that you know one thing that you take with you and you'll always remember everything that you learned as well as all the experiences that you had with your cohort so Absolutely. it's good to hear from you guys that you really enjoyed it yeah i, I know my mentor uh norm uh he was in the mba program at csrb so he's an alumni but he still tells me about um, people that he that were in his cohort, and he still keeps in touch with them. So that's something that I aspire towards, and I feel like um, the international trip definitely helps me. Um, hopefully, make that a reality. Okay, so I have one more question here from Tony. Tony um, said that he noticed that the evening program gives students the opportunity to specialize in topics outside of the College of Business. Um, how many classes are required to specialize in a topic? So I think this is more of a, from, from our end, I would know. So um, for specialization, you require at least three courses and up to four courses. Um, so you can choose to do a specialization outside of the College of Business, like healthcare administration, something like that. Um, so most of your core courses would be within the College of Business, and then you would have four, up to four classes that you can do in your specialization, um, but you have to do a minimum of three. So you can do four random classes, and that would be a general specialization.
specialization or a minimum of three and have a specialization in whatever that, that field is that you want to go into. Okay. I don't think we have any other questions at this point. I know some people need to get to class and everything. So at this point, I want to thank and excuse the panel. And then I can um, stay here and answer some admissions questions from everyone. But thank you guys all for thank you being guys. here. Awesome. Thank you so much. So I'm going to switch gears now and share my screen with everybody um, to show you a couple of slides on the admissions process. <laughs> All right. Um, thank you guys. So just very briefly, I'm going to talk to you a little bit about um, the application process and then take any questions on that that you might have. Um, so the application process is the same for all four MBA programs. Um, generally, what you'll need is a bachelor's degree from a regionally accredited university. You will have to sit for a GMAT or GRE exam, and there are some waivers, and I'll talk to you a little bit about how you can possibly get that waived. Um, you'll also have to submit an updated professional resume. You'll do a video statement. Statement of purpose. So in place of a written statement of purpose, we have a video statement of purpose. Um, this allows us to get our, to know our applicants a little bit better. It's kind of in place of an interview and instead of interviewing all of our candidates, which we don't have the resources to do, we instead ask you to submit this video statement of purpose where you answer, answer a couple of questions. Um, and it just helps helps us uh, to get to know our students um, a lot better, um, gauge their communication skills, that type of thing. Um, we do have a short response, kind of an essay question that you have to upload with your um, application. Um, and two letters of recommendation are also required. You can do up to three, but absolutely required is the two. So our entire application is all um, online through CalApply. Um, the application opened fall um, for fall 2020 opened October 1st. And you actually have until March 1st as an international student to apply and June 1st as a domestic student to apply. So you still have quite a bit of time to get your application in. There are four quadrants or four different parts of the application. So there's a lot of information that we require um, for, for the application. It is a little bit cumbersome, but there are videos um, online um, where we walk you through the entire process. We have three different videos, they're each about three minutes and it really walks you through the process. So I'm gonna send you, um, along with this recording and our contact information, I'll send you the videos that really go into detail on the application process. Um, another thing I wanna talk about, the only thing that you don't submit online um, are the transcripts um, and your test scores. So transcripts have to be sent directly from the issuing institution to our institution, um, whether that's electronically or through snail mail, either way, but those do have to be sent um, officials, which means they're from the um, issuing institution. Test scores also have to be sent directly from the test administrator to our university. That's what makes it an official test score. Now, I did mention that there is a few ways that you can waive the GMAT or GRE. So that is, um, there's two different ways. Um, if you have four years of significant managerial work experience, then you can apply to waive uh, this test. Um, another way to apply to waive the test is if you have an undergraduate degree from an AACSB accredited university um, with a 3.0 or better, um, then you can also, of course, in, in business administration, um, then you can also apply to uh, waive the GMAT or GRE. And we have um, a link on our website where you can apply for that. And again, I'll send you that link um, that everything that we talk about, I'm gonna send you all of these resources along with this recording and, and all of our contact information. So I just wanted to very briefly generally give you some information about the application process and how you can find out more. And I wanna let you um, ask any questions that you have for myself or for Dr. Wynn as one of the faculty in, in our MBA programs. Um, the next slide I wanna show you is just um, the contact information um, for all of us um, here at the, at the graduate office. So uh, Dr. Ingrid Martin is the director of all of the MBA programs and she will be the one that evaluates your MBA application and makes the ultimate admission decision. Um, I work specifically with the accelerated MBA program as well as two of the um, MS programs here. Um, Rihanna Williams works with the Saturday MBA programs and newly hybrid Saturday MBA program, as well as our um, MS in marketing analytics. And uh, Lindsay Stark works with um, both the evening and the online program, as well as the MS in information systems. 
So all of our contact information is there. You're also going to receive this um, with the email um, and along with this recording and some of the information that we've talked about. Um, so now that we've gone through all that, I'm just going to um, put the chat box back up. So if you have any questions, um, feel free to um, feel free to um, type them into the chat box. I'm just trying to get it out. Uh, here it is. Um, into the chat box, or you can unmute your microphone and just ask. Oh yeah, we do have a question. Um, so Linda is asking if we offer any dual degree programs. We actually have one dual degree, uh, which is, um, and I just learned this interesting fact actually yesterday, um, the only other university that has a similar dual degree is Harvard. Um, and that is what is called our MBA MFA program. So this is um, in conjunction with um, the College of Arts um, where their, their Masters of Fine Arts is combined with our MBA. You're essentially doing two master's degrees. It is quite a bit of units. It's not just the standard 48 units of an MBA degree, um, but that is our only what you would consider a dual degree. But with um, some of our MBA programs, you can get what's called a specialization, which we talked a little bit about, um, especially in the evening program. That program has a lot of different options for specializations, including some outside of the business school, which um, Tony asked about. Um, let's see. Oh, then there is another question from Rhonda. Um, it, uh, so Rhonda is asking if we have to wait until June 1st to submit our, um, if you have to wait until June 1st to submit your application, and you absolutely do not. Um, the sooner you apply, the better we are on rolling admissions. So we will process your completed application as soon as um, as we have everything that, that we need for the application. Application processing usually takes about six to eight weeks, um, depending on when, when you apply. So we have a, another question from Veronica. Veronica is asking if the evening program is the only program that allows for specializations. So the evening program is the only program that allows you to choose your specialization, um, but the other programs do have built-in specializations. The accelerated program has a, a concentration in innovation and entrepreneurship, like Dr. Wynn talked about. We just went to Tel Aviv and we met with businesses around innovation and entrepreneurship. Um, the online program has a general um, concentration and the Saturday program, the new hybrid Saturday program, is going to have a combined concentration in sustainability and disruptive it's technology. Yes, yes. Yeah. Okay, so it looks like we have uh, quite a few other questions um, coming in here. Um, so Linda asked, um, when you apply for your MBA, how soon do you have to take uh, your GMAT? Um, so you have to take your GMAT before the day of the deadline. So June 1st is the very last day to sit for your GMAT. However, you can submit your application before that, um, and that way we can start the processing, but we're not going to evaluate it for an official admission decision until we have that test score and the last day that you can sit for the exam is June 1st, even if we do get that um, score a little bit after the June 1st date, that's okay. Another question, um, can you repeat? Oh, so um, Linda wants more information on how you can get the GMAT wave. So uh, one more time, I'm sorry we go, I'm going a little bit too fast, but I will um, repeat it and then keep in mind you will get this recording, but um, there's two ways to waive the GMAT or GRE. The first way is if you have four years of significant managerial work experience, then you can apply for a waiver. If you feel that you meet that criteria, you would apply for a waiver and we'll get back to you and let you know um, whether or not we, you know, once we review your resume and everything, if you do uh, meet the criteria. The other way is if you have a degree in business administration from an AACSB accredited university with a 3.0 GPA um, or higher. So those are the two ways that you can may qualify for the waiver. To apply, I'll send you the link where you would apply, but to apply you'll have to upload a copy of your unofficial transcripts an updated professional resume and a letter of recommendation. If you're applying based off of the four years of managerial work experience, then you're going to want that letter of recommendation to be from a supervisor that can attest to your managerial work experience. And then we have one more question from Kyle also about the GMAT. Um, is the GMAT as important on the application um, as experience and gap? Um, so we do take a holistic approach to applications, so everything is important. But we all we also want to make sure that you can do well in the program. And two key indicators of that are going to be your GMAT or GRE test score, as well as your GPA. So those are kind of you know 
two very important factors for your application, but of course your work experience is going to help us um, if you have a qu quantitative, um, I should say quantitative um, undergraduate degree, that's also a, a good indicator that you can do well in the program because a lot of the students sometimes do struggle in those quantitative classes. So we want to make sure that somewhere in your application, you're showing that you can do well in that. So whether that is from your undergraduate degree or from your GMAT score or maybe from what you do if you're an accountant or something like that. That's uh, one of the very important things that we look for, making sure that you'll do well in our, in our quantitative classes. Um, another question that came in from Linda, of, um, yeah, does the waiver mean you don't have to take the exam? Yes, that's what it means. So if you do get the exam waived, that means you don't have to sit for the exam. Um, and she's also asking um, how long the accelerated program is and how long the Saturday program is. The accelerated program is 22 months and the Saturday program is 24 months. So both programs are cohort based, really structured programs that you finish in less than two years. And both of those programs have an international trip component built into it. So at the end of the um, program, you will go overseas for a week to study how business is done in the chosen country. Absolutely. So I think that is all of the questions that we have um, for right now, but keep in mind, um, you're gonna receive a recording of this, all of our contact information and some links of the things that we talked about, such as the application and the, the videos um, that outline the application, the GMAT GRE test waiver. So you'll receive all of that information from us. Um, we really look forward to, um, you know, hopefully, hopefully having all of you apply, evaluating your application, and then maybe you will be um, our students in the next year or two that participate in the panel with Dr. Wynn. Thanks, everyone. Thank you. Have a good night.